Alright, in this presentation of High School Packets Part 3, I'm going to go through an actual high school packet from Littleton, Massachusetts. Okay? And I want you to pay attention to everything I say. Now, the first mistake I made when I talked about Jeff Bliss was I assumed he knew about proper forums from the Latin auditoriums. And I presume that he already knew about honor challenges. Apparently he did not. And for that, I do apologize. If I'd have known that, I would have made presentations about all that a year ago. And none of that tirade would have ever, ever happened. I'm almost positive of that. And for you who are watching me now, the first thing I would do is I would spread the word about honor challenges. I would spread the word about proper Latin forums. And let's see if we can stop these tirades before they ever get started. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to present my own material to supplement these packets so that you're not have to rely on that teacher you have in your classroom, nor are you going to have to rely on that packet or any of its resources, because these packets are defunct. And I'm going to prove my point. Okay, We're going to actually bypass the packets. Okay. Every time you see one of these, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to ask from you people now, as my YouTube students, is that every time you have a packet, I want you to share it with me. I want you to tell me what's in that packet so I can counter it. That's right. I am going to make videos that will counter what's in those packets. And hopefully stop these tirades before they ever get started. Now, the first thing I have done is I have started making a series of videos on proofreading. Hopefully that will help you make better presentations. The second thing I did was I had a proper debate with a college student known as Andrew Wyatt. Okay, And it was about marijuana. And if you watch my two-part presentation and his responses to me, you will see what a proper debate is all about. It was a proper forum, which is YouTube. It was properly structured. It was grammatically correct. It was well presented with a ton of information. Then you can see how you are supposed to argue these cases. Not like what Jeff Bliss did. The idea isn't to so much trash Jeff Bliss. The idea here is to make sure that doesn't happen in the first place. Haven't you ever heard, and you probably have it, so I'm going to say it right now. An ounce of prevention, uh, no, let me say it again, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Now let me be the first to say that I do have a stuttering problem, and I don't know that it'll ever be cured, but we're going to try the best we can. All right. Now, Jeff complained about having non-engaging teachers. Well, I am an engaging teacher, obviously so, because you guys have seen this. You leave me comments, I respond back. The positive comments, I respond in a positive way. Like Andrew Wyatt, he, he made a video, I responded, he responded, I responded back, and we had a proper debate. So, there was no problem there. Okay. Even in some of my other heated debates, if it's properly structured, we, we've come up with a lot of good things. It even forced me to learn more stuff. Matter of fact, one of the best things about a teacher, a real teacher, is that they will learn as much as they are teaching. And I have learned as much from these debates that I have actually presented as I have taught. That's a real teacher. I don't know what's sitting in that classroom right now, but I'm telling you, I'm the real thing. And I will work with you if you will work with me. If you're going to get bratty, you'll get kicked out of class. And I think you guys already know that. So, anyway, let's go through this packet. This is supposed to be, this particular portion is supposed to be completed on the first day of school. Really? I think teachers should talk about honor challenges, proper Latin forums, uh, proper methods of debate, that kind of thing. But since they're not going to do that, let's just bypass them. I'll do it myself. If they can't do the job, I can. I think I'm doing a pretty good job so far. Okay. So, before we get into this, I would like for you guys to refer to my marijuana videos. 
and watch the debate between Andrew Wyatt and myself to see how you properly structure a debate to get to a proper conclusion. Okay? Alright, let's get into this. Uh, the first question is about circumference and ratios of circles. This was clearly covered in Euclid's Elements Book 1. I have made full presentations on this. All you have to do is go over to those videos and you can look this up yourself. You say, well, where am I going to find them? You go to my main, main channel page. You look up Euclid's Elements. It's one of the playlists. Okay, I have Euclid's Elements and I have Euclid's Elements 2. You look through those playlists, find them, and bam, there you go. Okay? So that's all covered. All right. Then they are talking about areas of rectilineal figures. Okay. This was also covered in Euclid Book 1. All you have to do is go over to those videos. You'll see this for yourself. You can also go through my mathematics playlist. You can see a lot of that stuff too. So. All righty. Now, the next one is finding the volume of each solid. Okay, now this comes up later, and I will cover this eventually. I know you're struggling with this right now. I've had to teach you a bunch of ratios through Euclid's book 5, 6, and 7. But as we approach Euclid book 10, we'll start talking about volumes of solids. So that part is coming. Uh, you might want to consult some geometry books until I get to that. And I am sorry about that. I, I know I need to get into that. Um, okay. We're talking about volumes of spheres. Uh, I'll give you a brief little something on that. A sphere is nothing more than a ball. You have your sphere, you have your orb. Basically, they are balls. Okay. They're, they're perfectly round. There's no angles on them whatsoever. It's just a round something. Okay, A basketball would be considered a, a sphere or a, an orb. Okay. So, let's go on here. Hold on. Find the mean of each set of data. I have started discussing this in Euclid's books 5 through 7. You need to watch those videos. You'll have a better understanding of all that. Find the median of the following set of data. Again, this is starting to be discussed through Euclid's book 5 through 7. If you'll watch that, you'll have a pretty good idea what's being talked about here. Find the mode of each set of data. This is something I will go ahead and research myself and probably make some presentations on. I'm sure eventually we'll cover this through Euclid and we'll ha probably have to expand from there. I didn't know though there's such things as a mode. Uh, where they came up with this, I don't know. Okay, and of course median, once again, that's in Euclid. Uh, I have talked about domain and ranges in my calculus videos. You'll find this in my mathematics videos. A quartile. I've never heard of a quartile. And I'm going to go ahead and make some notes. And this is what a good teacher will actually do. Okay, so let me see. I'm learning too. And I probably should write up here mode okay and I will look these up I'll make presentations about this as well now keep in mind a lot of this stuff will probably be incorporated in my Euclid's elements so uh, you might want to start paying attention as I make more presentations about Euclid's elements I'll probably end up covering this Match the given values, uh, and then they talk about box and whisker plots. Let me write this down. I'm going to do some research on where they're getting all this, and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what they're talking about. Uh, I can't imagine 
a high school Algebra 1 student ever knowing any of these terms. Uh, when I went to Algebra 1, I didn't know these terms. I went through Algebra 2 without knowing any of this. You said to go, what? you kidding me. Hey, that's, this is different. Um, I will now make presentations about all this. A box of whisker plot. Boy, where do they get the stuff? I'd love to know. Again, I will cover all this. Okay, that this is talking about bar graphs and pie graphs and charts. Um, I know I've never really covered all this, but if you know enough about data processing, you can probably read these charts pretty quickly. And if you ever, guys ever need me to make a presentation on that, I'll go ahead and do so. Uh, cause that, that's not fair. Okay, we're going to have to talk about scatter plots. I will eventually cover this as statistics as well. But uh, if you guys don't know what a scatter plot is, of course you're not going to be able to answer this. You know, you're watching this live, me going through all this, and um, they're describing the data presented with, an, with a mathematical equation. Um, if you don't know how to turn data into an equation, you're certainly not going to be able to answer this. That, this is what they're giving Algebra 1 kids? I couldn't pass this. At least not yet. We're going to get there. Uh, I think Euclid, Euclid probably doesn't cover this in this respect, but if you had a knowledge of Euclid, you might be able to be, be able to answer this. Uh, certainly data processing can answer a lot of this. Wow. Another scatter plot. Where are they getting these terms? We never had this when I was in high school. I can see why he objected. But like I said, Jeff Bliss didn't have the qualifications to do this. Uh, th this requires a lot of etymology. This requires data processing knowledge. Uh, all this is way over what an Algebra 1 kid should really have. I'm sorry, this is way too much. Uh, so I will object to this. And I have better qualifications to do so. Like you guys are used to patterns. I have to teach you Euclid's elements to t get you through patterns. That's the way it works. Uh, without an in-depth knowledge of Euclid's elements, you're not going to make this. Uh, I, I disagree with them 100%. I wish Jeff Bliss had contacted me, sent me his packet so I could deal with this. This, this is stuff that I need to deal with, not him. I know I have said that before, I'm going to say it again. I need to deal with this, not him. Okay. Alright. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty easy. Uh, ratios and percents, I've covered this in my mathematics videos, so you should be able to answer this quite easily. Now, a markup basically means you are actually increasing the price of the item due to the following factors. Uh, you're running a store, so you have to add in the rent cost of that store into the, into the price of that item. Uh, you've hired employees to sell that item, so you have to incorporate those costs into that. Uh, and that includes payroll taxes, too, because remember, you're paying taxes on these people that you just hired. You don't just pay them a salary. You have to pay taxes on them, too. You also have to buy health insurance for these people. Well, at least that's the way it's supposed to go. Alright, um, 
Obviously, if you're going to run heat or air conditioning or any kind of lighting in your store, you're going to have to have the cost of that factored into this. If, you're, if your store has restrooms, of course you're going to have to factor in the water into that too. Okay, and that includes having a mop bucket where you're able to mop the floor if somebody breaks something. Uh, incorporate the cost of the uh, broom and the dustpan that you're going to have to have in case something breaks and it's glass. See what I mean? So there's a lot of extra things you have to add to the price of the item in order to sell it. That's what they're talking about in markup. Uh, this is where accounting knowledge comes in. You will find a lot of this in my accounting videos. Huh. So, uh, so what they're saying in essence is that not only do you have to have a knowledge of simple mathematics, but you're supposed to also have a knowledge of Euclid's elements, accounting, and data processing before you go into Algebra 1. This is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. And I'm going to go through just a little bit more here. Logical reasoning. Where are you going to get that logical reasoning from? You're going to get it from Euclid's elements. You're going to get it through data processing. That's where you're going to get it. This is the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Uh, I wish you guys had presented this to me because if you had, I would be covering a lot of this topic. So, anyway, they expect you to be able to answer all these questions before you start the first day of school. Okay, well, first of all, my suggestion to you, I want you to go through every one of my mathematics videos. I want you to go through my Euclid's Elements videos that I've got so far. You'll be able to answer a lot of these questions. Um, you can go through my computer tech skills and you can get some answers from that. Learn how to flow chart. You'll need it. And uh, do go through my accounting videos because a lot of this will start making sense when you do. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Wow. I couldn't pass this, and I've had all this experience. Only because they are presenting material that I've never even heard of. This is not for Algebra 1. I, I would put this at uh, pre-calc or even calculus. This is stuff you need to know for calculus, not Algebra 1. That, these, these, people are, these people are wacky. I'm going to tell you that right now. They're, they're wacky, and I'm going to have to start making some presentations to fix this. We're going to bypass that packet. I guarantee it. All right? So in my next video, I'm going to review yet another one of these packets from um, this Littleton, Massachusetts. And we'll start reviewing these packets one by one. From now on, you students start sending to me these packets, telling me what's in them and what you're supposed to learn, and then I will make videos and stop this. This is ridiculous. Okay. So a data processor says these packets are ridiculous. That's far better and far higher in qual qualifications than Jeff Bliss. So hopefully Jeff Bliss will sit down and let me do my job. This is the job I have to do. Littleton, Massachusetts, wake up! Are you that stupid? Get rid of this packet and start using me instead. This is ridiculous. It's insane, that's what I think it is. Okay, I'll stop the video for now. I will tell you more in a future video. Stay tuned.